And now, stay tuned for the program that has rated tops in popularity for a longer period of time than any other West Coast program in radio history. The Signal Oil Program, The Whistler, transcribed by the Signal Oil Company for New Year's Eve to enable the entire production staff of The Whistler to spend New Year's Eve with their families and friends. Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline, invites you to sit back and enjoy another strange story by The Whistler. I am The Whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now for the Signal Oil Company, The Whistler's strange story, The Big Jump. Only a few days before, in the midst of the Christmas season, Dave Leonard had told himself that there was no place quite like San Francisco. It was thrilling to be a part of it. The hills, the bay, the clanging cable cars. Only a few days before, Dave had been happy with his job, his surroundings, his home, his wife. Now suddenly that was all changed, wiped away somehow. The city was a frightening place. His job, something that was threatened. His home, his wife. Things that he must give up, be put behind him as rapidly as possible, lest they be threatened too. And that was why Dave walked down Gary Street and across Powell to the airline's office. A neon sign blinked the words, Ring out the old, ring in the new, to advertise special New Year's flights. Dave approached the ticket window, asked for space on the very next plane for Los Angeles. The clerk was friendly, cooperative, and yes, he would be able to accommodate Mr. Leonard. He began to prepare the ticket and told him the amount. Here, yes. uh, here you are. Oh, fine. Is the flight on schedule? Will I be able to get away soon? The limousine for the airport will be loading in 20 minutes, Mr. Leonard. Oh. And you'll be on your way by, uh, let's see, by 4.30. 4.30, good. I... Hello, Dave. What? You going somewhere? I, uh, uh yes, no, I... No, I don't think that's such a good idea. Uh, would you mind refunding Mr. Leonard's money, please? Well, what? He isn't going anywhere. He's uh, changed his mind. Well, but he just... Right, but... Dave? Aren't you staying around so we can talk some more? Yes. Yes, he, he's right. Give me the money and, and forget it. Forget the whole thing. Whatever you say, sir. You scoop up the money, Dave. Hurry outside. It's even more foreboding now. The city... The walls of its tall buildings seem to close in around you, don't they? Because he's back again, apparently not letting you out of his sight for the past three days since he first found you. Now he's falling into step behind you. No use hurrying, is there, Dave? You can't run away. Ah, that's better, Dave. That's much better. No use being in a hurry. I've been right with you for the last three days. Uh, why don't we stop in here and have a drink, huh? chat some more. All right. You're calling it. Uh, It's good bourbon, huh, Dave? Oh, you haven't touched yours. Get to it, will you, Tommy? What do you want from me? Why have you chased me all the way across the country? Who sent you? Easy, Dave, easy. None of the old bunch even knows you're alive, honest. I just ran onto you quite by accident. I don't believe it. Oh? You think you left a loose end, Dave? That there's a bridge of some kind behind your old life and this one? I don't know. Well, I'll tell you, there isn't. Except for an accident, I'd have gone on like everybody else, believing exactly what it says on those New York police records, what the papers said at the time. Let's see, how did it go... Man leaps to death from River Bridge. Stop it. You didn't do it at all, did you? Just made it look that way. The note you left pinned to your coat. All a fake. I didn't do anything wrong. No, no. It isn't like taking a life. 
just getting rid of one, huh? I couldn't get any places, Marvin Knowles, Tommy. Man with a record isn't always welcome. You served your time. That didn't make any difference. Okay, so you got away with it. Working out pretty nice here, I understand. Got a good job, pretty wife. It's all over. Why? Because of you. No matter how you found me, Tommy, you have. That's all that's important. Oh, no, you don't have to change anything. I'll play ball. I'm trying to live decently, Tommy. Can't you understand? I've managed to these past six years. Almost seven, isn't it? Sure. Marvin Knowles will be legally dead New Year's Eve. Wasn't that when you staged the big jump? Yes, that's when it was. Tommy, I'm not going to take this. I don't have to. Easy. I'm... Sit down. What are you thinking of doing? Going to the police? Maybe. You could, sure. But I wonder if it'd do either of us any good. Oh, they might get me off your neck. The police would be interested in me for many reasons, but... Dave, if it hit the papers, your real name came out. The past. I've got friends now. Oh? You had friends when you were released from prison, too. Where are they now? Unless you still call what's left of the old gang friends. Please. What do you want from me? A little cooperation. But let's be sure we understand each other first. Yeah. <laughs> Not many of the old gang left. Just a couple of them, as far as I know. But they can play pretty rough. Maybe they think you talk too much. I didn't. You know that. Yeah, yeah. But you know too much. Maybe they think you've already talked to your wife that she knows too much. If they could find Marvin Knowles, they might like to silence him. Maybe his wife, too. Stop it. Sure, go to the police, Dave. Cut your throat and mine and your wife's. I'm afraid it'd cost you a lot more than your job. You see what I mean? Yes, I see what you mean. Then I think we understand one another. Well, I'll keep in touch, Dave. Let you know how and when you can help me. Oh, and meanwhile, don't try to skip town anymore, huh? You might just make me sore. <laughs> I, uh, wouldn't want to have to get rough with you, Mark. <laughs> Dave. <laughs> Yes, Dave, it's all changed in the surprising arrival of one man, your old friend, Tommy Northcote. One man who can ruin your life, strike terror in your heart, cause the old familiar warmth and friendliness of the city you've come to love to turn into a chilled atmosphere of menace, despair. And back at home, you can't even bring yourself to talk about it to the one person who's brought you more comfort and understanding than you'd ever dreamed possible. The one person who knows your past, a past the two of you had agreed never again to talk about. Sue, if you don't mind, I don't want to talk about it anymore. But, Dave, there's something bothering you. I know it. Something's on your mind. No, I'm, I'm just tired, that's all. Today, this afternoon, you left the office early, didn't you? You called the office? At 3 o'clock. You hadn't come back from lunch, the girl said. You shouldn't have called. Where were you, Dave? Well, I... I was detained. A customer. You talked to a customer from noon until after 3. Maybe. What of it? Dave, is... Is that all you're going to say? Please, Sue, will you leave me alone? I was out on business. Isn't that enough? Do you have to cross-examine me? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, forget it, Sue. I, I didn't mean to... Look, I, I don't know what's wrong with me. What do you say we go out tonight, huh? For a walk or to a movie. Get our minds off of it, huh? Off what, Dave? Okay, so I'll go out alone. There must be some way to stop these questions. I'll be back when you see me, understand? Even as you hurl the words at Sue and rush from the house, you're sorry, aren't you, Dave? But your mind is spinning with confusion, question marks. And the hours of walking the holiday deck streets alone fail to provide an answer. Then as you start toward home again, and the dismal sound of the foghorn moans in at you from the waters near Golden Gate Bridge, a thought does occur, a dread final thought, but something that could provide an answer. Another bridge gave you an answer almost seven years ago, didn't it, Dave? Now, with everything you've ever wanted, worked for, threatened, you find yourself thinking of staging another such act. Only this time, Tommy Northcote would die. And what would appear to everyone as a simple suicide might actually be 
murder. You're still thinking about it as you slip the key in the latch. Let yourself into the house and cross to the bedroom. Dave? Oh, Sue, I, I thought you were asleep. Mm, couldn't. Not with you away. No, no, don't turn on the light. Sue, I, I'm... I'm sorry about this evening. I, I didn't mean any of the things I said. I know. Anyway... I'm not mixed up anymore. Everything's clear in my mind. I've been worrying unnecessarily. Everything's going to be all right again. And soon. Because New Year's Eve is an appropriate time to take stock of one's blessings... We of the Signal Oil Organization would like to take this opportunity to express our appreciation to all of you who have given us so much for which to be thankful. To you loyal Whistler fans whose continued preference for Signal products has helped us grow from a small start in one state into an organization now serving seven western states, we are genuinely grateful. To independent Signal dealers whose conscientious service has helped so much to keep customers and their cars happy, we are mighty appreciative. So that all of us in the Signal Oil family may continue to merit your friendship and your business, you can count on us to pursue our policy of making Signal products ever finer and Signal services more complete. Throughout the new year, as for the past 20 years, we shall do everything in our power to make your stops at Signal stations, as well as your miles behind the wheel, happy ones. It changed everything, didn't it, Dave? Your plans with your wife, Sue. Hopes for the future. Everything was changed just before the new year when Tommy Northcote walked into your life from the past and recognized you as Marvin Knoll, a man he'd known in the East, a man who once served time in prison and was trying his best to live it down with a new life in San Francisco as David Leonard. Yes, it was all changed. Tommy is a threat. But you think you've found the answer, the one way out. And while you hate the thought of murder, you find yourself trying to figure out the best way to kill Tommy, plan a way to talk him into the trap. And finally, you're rewarded with a remarkable bit of luck as Tommy admits his reasons for coming to the West Coast in the first place. I've got to tell you, Dave, there's no use hiding that they're after me. The police? Yeah, them too, sure, but I'm not afraid of the police. It's the old gang. They think I double-crossed them. Of course you didn't. That's beside the point. I've got to get away from them, Dave. You're going to help me, see? Sure. I figured there'd be something I'd have to do. I haven't much money, Tommy. You got some. You got a car, too. I want you to drive me up north someplace. Seattle. Maybe on into Canada. But my job... You can I... get a leave of absence. Tell him you got a sick relative. Tell him anything. I don't know. Around the holidays like this, we're awfully busy. It's got to be this way, Dave. I'll squeal to the old gang on you if you don't. It's my neck. Yeah, I just drop out of sight like you did. If I was to travel with a man and his wife, I'd be less likely to be traced. Now, wait a minute, Tommy. What? You just said something about uh, dropping out of sight. Tommy. Yeah? Tommy, I faded out of the picture almost seven years ago, remember? I made everybody think I jumped off a bridge, committed suicide. So you fooled everybody but me. So what? So why can't you do the same thing? I'd help you, Tommy, tell you what to do. You could write a note, say you feared these men who were chasing you. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. You really think... Sure. That... Ring out the old, ring in the new. Didn't I make it, Tommy? What, didn't I? Yeah, 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 sure, sure. But you had a different reason. You wanted to go straight and couldn't get a break. What do reasons matter, Tommy? The main thing is you'll throw them off your track. You can travel alone, go anywhere, as somebody else. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure I could. Hey, I think you hit it, Dave. You've saved my life. Now, all I gotta do is write a suicide note. That's right, Tommy. 
That's all you have to do. He's fallen into your trap, hasn't he, Dave? Yes, and you're relieved. Yet far from pleased at the thought of what you have decided to do. You don't like to think about it, do you? What you've planned to do out there in the fog. Silence, Tommy Northcote. But there's no other way. You don't want to kill, but you decide you have to. It doesn't seem much like New Year's Eve, does it, Dave? You've told Sue you don't feel up to celebrating. Instead, you sit in the den, pretending to read the newspaper, struggling to conceal the panic, the terror mounting within you. Dave? Yes? I've been thinking, why don't we run down to Carmel for a few days? Do us good to get away. Give our new year a good start. Yeah, I, I suppose so. Uh, we could stay at the inn again. Remember? When was it? Three years ago? We met Fran and Charlie there. That nice old Mr. Franklin. We had such a wonderful time, didn't we? Mm-hmm. Well, shall we? Uh, what's that, Sue? Uh, haven't you been listening? Uh, I'm sorry, My but mind I... was a million miles away, perhaps just as far as the office. Is that it? Yes, I guess so. No, that isn't it at all, is it, Dave? What's the matter? Matter? Well, nothing. Something's been on your mind almost since Christmas. Something rather serious, I'm afraid. Won't you tell me what it is? Really, Sue, it's nothing at all. We used to be able to talk over our little problems, sort of iron things out together. I remember my first attempt to cope with a family budget. Yeah. Dave, I... I suppose it's going to sound awfully silly, but... Well, is there someone else? Someone else? A woman? Oh, no, no, Sue, nothing like that. Darling, how could you ever think I, that I... I, I... I didn't really... Oh, Sue, there'll never be anyone in my life but you. Dave, darling. But you're right. There is something on my mind. And it is serious. I'm in trouble, Sue. But, Dave, you... You haven't done anything... I, I mean... No, no, nothing like that. It's just... Well, the old routine again. They won't leave me alone. Someone's found out. Someone from the old crowd? Yes, Tommy Northcote. I ran into him on the street one day. He found out I changed my name. He found out everything. I see. Well, what's he going to do? He wants money. Well, then give it to him. Give him all we have. And, and it'll be finished. It's not as simple as that, Sue. He wouldn't stop there. But if we didn't have any more money... He'll probably force me to work on a job with him. Oh, no, Dave, you can't do that. I haven't any choice, Sue. Yes, you have. We'll go away, Dave, far away. They'll never find us. Tommy would find us. So might the old gang. Then we'd have to run again. No, Sue, I can't run anymore. I started to the other day. I was going to take a plane, send for you later. But it's no use. Please, Dave. We'll leave tonight, right now. I tell you, it's no use. You know what'll happen if we don't, Dave? One job with Tommy, and then there'll be another, and another. And some night I'll be called down to the morgue to a dead of... Oh, Sue, Sue, darling. You mustn't ever go back to that kind of life, Dave. You can't go back. But, Sue, running away, it's no good. It wouldn't work. But going someplace else is our best chance, darling. Going somewhere else. What else can we do? What else? Yes. How else can you get rid of this man? There, there is a way. I've thought it all out. A very simple way. What? Oh, no, Dave. You couldn't do anything like killing a man. Not even torming Tommy Northcote. You couldn't. No, I, I guess not. I guess I couldn't kill him. All right, Sue. We'll run for it. She's right, isn't she, Dave? There is a chance. A slim chance that you can slip away from Tommy Northcote. Start life all over again in some small town. While you finish packing, 
Sue hurries down to the garage and drives your car around to the alley back of your apartment house. When she returns, you're ready. You pick up the suitcases and start for the door. Hi, Sue, Dave. I was just going to come over. Come on over and join the party. Oh, Brad, hello. Uh, we were, um... We are just leaving. Bag and baggage, I see. Yeah. Oh, now, listen to that music. It's party night. My apartment door is wide open because it's party Brad, night. Brad, please, uh, we're really in a hurry. Now, Sue, you can't run out on your next-door neighbor on New Year's Eve. Look, Brad, we've got to leave right now. We're driving to, uh, uh, to Carmel. We want to make it before midnight. Well, there's lots of time, Dave, old boy. Just one. Just one drink for the road, huh? For the road. And for New Year's. I don't be a fuddy-duddy. It's New Year's Eve, or didn't you know? Oh, please, Brad, a, a rain check. It, it, it's terribly important that we leave right now. What's the matter with you two? We can't explain now, Brad. We'll be back in a few days. Come on, Sue. Well, for... Uh, New Year's greetings to you, too. Get in the car, Sue. I'll put the suitcase in. Look... Hello, Dave. Tommy. Evening, Mrs. Leonard. New Year's greetings. I'm sure you are, Mrs. Leonard. You folks going someplace? Uh, uh yes, we, uh... Running out on an old pal, huh? No. No, my, uh, my boss called up and wants me to go upstate. Business. Oh, is that so? Yeah. Yeah, I called your rooming house, but, uh... But I wasn't there. Mm-hmm. Gone on a little trip, huh? Only for a few days. I'll be back middle of the week. Yeah, you'll get in touch with me. That's right. Soon as I get back. Uh-uh. I'm going with you, pal. But, Tommy... I said I'm going with you. Now, get in, both of you. We'll drive to my place, pick up my stuff, and we'll head north over the gate bridge. Huh? It's no use, Dave. You'll never be able to run away from Tommy Northcote. You're certain of that now. As you drive across town through streets crowded with celebrants, you glance over at Sue from time to time, sitting next to you, staring straight ahead. Her face tense, and you know she's struggling to hold back a flood of tears. The anger, the hatred within you grows. Hatred for the man in the back seat of your car, and hatred towards yourself for what you've done to Sue. Finally, you bring the car to a stop in front of Tommy's boarding house. Okay, folks, I'll get my stuff. Be right on. You, uh, you'll wait, huh? Yeah, we'll wait. Well, just to make sure you do, turn off the ignition, hand over the car. I said we'd wait. The keys. All right, here. Thanks, pal. Be right back, folks. Look, Sue, why don't you go back to the apartment? I'll handle this alone. No, no, Dave. I'm not going to leave you. Sue, I don't want you to get mixed up in this. Now, forget it. Forget me. Go back to the apartment. I won't, Dave. I can't leave you. Come on, darling. Let's get away from here. Sue. I mean it, Dave, right now. We can walk, talk it out, decide what to do. Before he comes back, please, darling. All right, Sue. Maybe a walk will help. You wander along the streets, weaving in and out of the gay crowds who have already caught the New Year's spirit. Sue clings tightly to your arm. And somehow, through the increasing din of noisemakers, the two of you talk it out, don't you, Dave? Yes, you walk for hours, trying to make up your mind. And finally, just before midnight, you begin to come to a decision. We'll go to the police, Dave. Have Tommy Northcote arrested. Let your past come out. It's the only right way out of this. There's more to it than that, dear. If I went to the police, Tommy would find a way to let what's left of the old gang know I was still alive, where I am. There are only a couple of important members of the old gang left, but they think I know too much. And what's more important, they'd figure I told you too much. You realize what that means, don't you? Yes, but I'd prefer to take a chance on anything than have you do wrong. You mean you'd even risk being killed? Yes, rather than having you risk everything we've built together. Oh, you're wonderful, Sue. Not wonderful. I just believe in you. Come on, darling. We'll go to the police. Tell them everything. All right, Sue. All right, let's find a police station.
Do you play cards or have friends who play cards? Then you won't want to miss the little free gift that's waiting for you at your nearest signal service station. It's a 12-page booklet on that exciting new version of Canasta called Hollywood Three-Deck Canasta. Here's what one of America's foremost card experts says of the game. You'll never know how much fun cards can be until you've played this exciting new three-deck game. It has completely replaced two-deck canasta with all my friends in Hollywood. Those are the words of Robert Lee Johnson, the only Pacific Coast member of the National Canasta Laws Commission. No wonder leading department stores in 32 states are now selling this booklet, containing complete rules for the game. But your signal dealer wants you to have a copy free to add to the card-playing pleasure of your holidays. There's no obligation, no purchase required. To get your copy of the 12-page booklet on Hollywood three-deck canasta, just be sure to stop by a signal station soon while your signal dealer's supply lasts. You've made your decision, haven't you, Dave? Yes, you can't run from the past, from Tommy Northcote. And you can't kill him either. So you're going to the police. You're going to tell them everything. Tell them about your fake suicide in New York seven years ago. That you're not David Leonard, but an ex-convict named Marvin Knoll. You're certain it will mean the end of everything for you and your wife, Sue. But there's nothing else you can do. Now, after hours of walking along the city streets, talking things out, the two of you step into a police station. Approach the officer at the desk. Sergeant? Hmm? Oh, what can I do for you, sir? I, uh... Well, my name is David Leonard. Uh, well, that is, since I arrived in San Francisco, I... Leonard... Oh, yes, David Leonard. Yeah, I've got the report right here. Stolen car. <laughs> I hope you had it insured, Mr. Leonard. What? Pretty badly smashed up, I'm afraid. What? I don't understand. Well, it was quite a gun battle over in the Mission District. We arrested a couple of strong-armed boys. They tried to kill a man named Northcote. Dave. Yeah, and in trying to get away from them, he stole your car. He wrecked it. Northcote died at emergency about an hour ago. He, this Northcote is dead? Yeah, and so is your husband's car, lady. My New Year's present for the pair of you. It's all right. We don't mind. No. The funny thing about those guys trying to get North Coat, they didn't know he was going to do away with himself anyway. They'd have avoided a murder rap if they had. Suicide? Yeah, North Coat had a note in his pocket saying he figured on jumping off the bridge. He named these two hoods as the reason. We'd have had no trouble rounding them up, of course. The names and everything right there in Tommy North Coat's last message. Sue. Sue, did you hear? Yes, Dave. Look at the time, darling. It, it's midnight. Yeah. yeah. Hey, it's New Year's. Another New Year's. I hope it's a fine New Year's for you, Sergeant. Thank you. And Sue? Yes? We're through with the old forever, aren't we? Yes, darling. And now we can go on with the new. Let that whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Sunday night at this same time. Signal Oil Company has asked me to remind you, tonight it's especially important to drive at sensible speeds, be courteous, and obey traffic regulations, so some avoidable accident doesn't mar the new year for you. Featured in tonight's story were Bill Foreman, David Ellis, Gene Bates, and Bill Conrad. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen with story by Joel Malone, music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transcribed and transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. The Whistler is entirely fictional. All characters portrayed on The Whistler are also fictional. Any similarity of names or resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Remember at this same time next Sunday another strange tale by The Whistler. Marvin Miller speaking for the Signal Oil Company. <laughs>